All right, we're live. This is uh, Monday Night Tales from Flipside 308 or something, 307. I don't really know. Um, we have uh, WonderCon. These boys just came back from WonderCon. Another bright eyed, bushy tail, and exhausted. So, we're, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we have uh, sad news, a lot of sad news uh, today. Um, we got market report. And what we'll do today is we're going to swap the market report and uh, the pickups because I want to get these guys out of here. And then um, we can do uh, we can do the market report after. Uh, should be a good show. We're gonna do it, and uh, let's go. <laughs> Mildly early, I would say. Uh, hey, wait, we are, dude. I would yeah. say late. Like, <laughs> dude, AOA like, beats me to my own show. I, yeah, I, both I show up, dude, and I'm, we're always late. <laughs> Just show up at like nine. Um, uh, so uh, if we kick it off with news, um, I'll do the, the, the good stuff first, and then we'll get to the sad stuff. Um, I just saw this over the, the weekend because I've been watching Invincible. I'm sure like everybody else in this group. Uh, Invincible recast Ezra Miller's role in Wake Up Actors Controversy. I didn't even know he was in it. Yeah, I didn't know that voice was him. So. Yeah, so I'm not too bad. And and literally the scene is like six words. Is it? Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, I do. Very... It's whatever. Yeah, yeah some, some of those. Yeah, is his voice even? I don't know. That noticeable, or is that name that noticeable? Whatever, Ezra. <laughs> yeah, that, that don't. I. It's somebody made more of it than anybody would have cared. He can act a little bit, man. It sure seems like he's a dickhead, though. Yeah, I will say, freaking Invincible is still killing it. Yeah, for sure. And I, oh, I, mean, doing, I read the doing... entire comic series, and I still like it because it deviates just enough that keeps me, you know, like, oh, okay, what are they doing? Are they doing just four more and then they're dropping it? Is it eight again or is it ten or do we know? I think it's eight. Yeah, it's an eight season, um, eight episode season. They, yeah, I miss it already, man. So. They they even made fun of themselves uh, in a in this number seven, and I enjoyed it about their art and the style. So it was solid. I um, I've been watching the the ones who live too, Sean. I've been I've been, I've been uh, walking. Down. Oh, I'm too. Behind. I'm. I think is there five now. I think it's. I'm, I'm, I'm too. I'm too. I've seen three. Is it I'm any pretty good? Sure there's five. It's great. It's I pretty like. Good. I, I I like the first. I like the first three, and then you know how Walking Dead goes there's with suspending disbelief on shit. We're, we're on six six episodes. There's already so oh, I got three to watch. Oh god damn! No, I got too much shit to do tomorrow. Okay, I'll get caught up by Sunday. Um, oh, that's uh good. no, I think it's good because I'm just dude. Do see Rick and Michonne together. And there's there's way more to it, so it'll keep you in. They're not just like in a village. It's the future, yeah. you know. It's six or eight years or whatever after okay. after the bridge, I think. Mm -hmm. After he blew up, and so yeah. And honestly, you're not going to be too. You didn't you didn't stay till the end of the actual no. series, did you? Okay, I did, but um, you're you're really you're not going to know if you got to losing Rick. Yeah, you'll pick up on the rest pretty. They'll fill you in a little bit. Um, if yeah. not, I can, I can do it now by saying Michonne, the everybody's back, everybody's still alive, is back at the camp. Michonne's out looking for Rick and found him, huh. and now you know that the kids are at home and Michonne finds Rick. She, I mean, pretty obvious she finds him. There's no other fucking point to this yeah. series <laughs> without that. So that happens, and it's a, it's a cool way to play it. It's a uh, uh yeah, it's cool. I'm 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 enjoying it. It's good to see Rick again. So he always made the show, in my opinion. So, so. one one last entertainment thing because I missed last week, but uh, Roadhouse was entertaining as shit. I thought story. it was okay. It made no sense. Yeah, Connor's crazy as shit, but it was two hours of an action popcorn yeah. flick. Yeah, it's something where like we we talked about last week, where it's like you just put some shit on and you can do some stuff, and it's like. You don't, you know, you're locked in, and you know, if you don't, it's, you know, did it, did it make locked. any sense? No, did yeah. it, did it reference the original a little bit? Did the, the original make that much sense? The Not best really. I ever heard it was the I wish they would have. I think they said that one of the comments I read was it's 30 minutes too short. If it was 30 minutes longer, where they could have web like 
like the the bookstore, some other things in it where it was like fleshed it out kind of more. It probably would have been like really really good film. Like they just felt like they just chopped off. But it almost been too long then. The Roadhouse. I'm You're talking Roadhouse, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah, Roadhouse. No, honestly, that shit was amazing. Yeah. I thoroughly loved every bit of that. The fight scenes were good. Fight, Conor McGregor plays Conor McGregor. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing I always like watching Conor McGregor. Like, you know, the McGregor press, you get a YouTube alert says a UFC press alert, Conor McGregor and whoever the hell it is. Are you not going to, you're not going cl- to click live? I've been watching the Roadhouse press. Have you been watching the Roadhouse ones of Conor McGregor? No. Oh my God. It no, is. I feel like I should, huh? He's got the shakes. Let's just put it that way. Oh yeah. He looks a little, he might be having a little fun. He's That's a little okay. disheveled right now. I think he's in uh, public, buddy. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's going through, uh, going back to UFC, so he has to get off some stuff. And uh, it's, he's, he's going to get some yoked. Yeah, stuff. it's called steroids, dude. Well, that guy's I, yoked. I think it, I won't. I think it's the old COC. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, he's going to get some more uh, roles in it's, movies. But it's just pre-workout, dude, and creatine. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah no. that's it, man. He's just out there lifting. He, he I, looks yeah. like his heart's going to explode every second he's going. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, he's, well okay, have so, you ever seen him? You ever seen him calm though? No. Unless he got, unless he got knocked out. But do even we, then, uh, he's not really do calm. we think it's he's usually be, flipping off somebody's wife? Do we think it's gonna be Roadhouse Two? You think we're gonna have Roadhouse Two? They're but talking I, about I, it. I don't. I, I don't know. How, how's it? How's it going though? I know. I like. I liked it. And I told my friends to watch it. They, they're like, they're just no watch case. it. They're, watch they're it talking about it. Time. Like there's discussion. The first time I watched, Dylan Hell talked about it. I was I was actually cleaning cleaning books. In my at my table in in the living I can see the living room TV and uh, it's uh, and so I didn't pay as much attention to the first half I just was all excited so I turned it on and then so I know halfway through I'm like this is fucking sweet so I just stopped and actually you know undivided attention so I mostly rewatched the the beginning just to catch I get it I like I I like fight scenes some are good some are bad yeah they're ridiculous but. They're not as ridiculous as they still treat like they're still like humans, but nobody yeah. can take no, you know, it's basically like if you like Rocky, you can't bitch about this. Yeah. Anybody can take that many punches to the head and fly out of a crash car, you know. I, I like the when he, uh, when he gets thrown off the boat. Yeah. Well, kind of the fight scenes, the early ones made me like how he was kind of talking through them. It felt like uh, Downey in uh, the first Sherlock. Oh, yeah. Kind of like I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, um, so 181 is about to go nuclear again. Joking. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Marvel now credits Roy Thomas's co-creative Wolverine. So. Come on, man. Do you we were like kind of the whole fucking world now? What's happening? Here? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. How is that? Uh... <laughs> How's that happen? He's an editor, dude. Of course you have some input. Is that? Just, I don't know. I don't get it. And you know what? It's just about when the people are like too dead to defend themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Here he is. Where the fuck you been for 50 years, man? Right. It's like instead of talking the truth, you print the legend. Like the legend. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody nobody wants to say anything disrespectful about Roy Thomas. Yeah. No. It's no. like, come on, dude. We all respect everything you've done. I don't know. So it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I guess Stan got a lot of credit for stuff. <laughs> yeah. an, an absurd amount of credit for things that he had nothing to do with. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah, interesting not, to give it back man. retroactively. Yeah. Somebody, somebody has a 181 or Roy Thomas' signature and they're trying to sell it on eBay. So. Maybe. <laughs> you like that comment? Is, is Rob Leffield going to get credit for the X Men in 20 years? Probably. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I like Rob. You know what's funny? He's talking about Liefeld is uh, I, I listen to Brian's podcast, and you know, for all the shit Rob gets for all his stuff, he he came off really good on the podcast. I thought he was smart, articulate. You know, like really cares about the hobby at least. Not like, you know. Kudos for those guys. Yeah. Good. I watched. Uh, oh, that's why. Where he's doing a CGC signing soon. Ah. Mm. Yeah, I think I, so. I was wondering. So we were talking about. I think it was last week on, um, but on on Beyond um, about it was actually about uh, the guy uh, 
of Chris knows done a lot of work for him, the comic presser and how he posted that he was, he was cracking and going to sub for signing the a, a 181, but it already had like Len and Romita and Trimp on it. I think maybe mm-hmm. Stan. Anyway, there wasn't there was all the people that were not here with us anymore. And we were like, who the hell is he going to get that cracked and signed for? But again, I don't know. I well, you had a five was, times, didn't you? I've seen a five and a six, which somebody's got like the letterer, you know. Okay. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, but you if you're sending though? this PGC for a signing, like who's coming up? Yeah, I know. I've got I've got four on mine. I thought you had five. No, I've got no, I've got those, and there's no way there's no one else that I want to sign it. Okay. I, yeah, I like I think five is what I'd seen, uh, maybe six, but I think five and one was like they got the letterer, which who the hell you know? Maybe Hugh Jackman's wife, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't actually know if he's married. Uh, I don't think anymore. I mean, you could be playing the whole like all the people who kind of were like quintessential to developing Wolverine to the character we know today. Um, so I mean, like, yeah, Claremont didn't have anything to do with the character, but let's be, like, didn't have anything to do with the character's creation. But Wolverine, as we know it, is the Claremont. creation of Chris Claremont, and also to a certain degree, Frank Miller as well with the the limited series. So somebody could be playing that game of like in the same way that they did that whole like um seven hundred. Yeah, where you had all of the, the people who either drew or pinned for Spider Man. But that's and, that's a know, ballsy like, book to do that on. I mean true. I mean, yeah, you are not wrong. So yeah. Oh, here's a here's one. Uh, yeah, I wish I could maybe I could blow this up. Uh, Ramita, Trump, uh, one Stan Lee, Thomas. Oh, that's a fiver. That's a fiver. No, it's got Thomas on it already. Already has Thomas. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. interesting. So I, yeah, I've seen. There's not. There's not. Honestly, there's not a lot with four. I just. I just put. Uh, I just put most six by somebody and I can. I did do. Uh, I he got in a collection or something. I pressed the Conan for Drew, mm-hmm. and I opened it up, and Roy Thomas was on the first page. Nice. And I was like, hey, dude, do you still, um, you, like, do you, you still want to grade this or whatever? He's like, I don't give a shit, grade it. I was like, okay. So it came back and it took him forever to, um, it took him forever to grade it. And it, that was really annoying because it was by itself because we all know that guy does moderns basically. Mm-hmm. So that was, you know, pre 75. So it took forever. They finally, they finally send it back. Blue label, I think it's 7075. Uh, send it back blue label and it says in quotation marks Roy Thomas written on the first page in pen. Yeah. It didn't seem like name ri- it actually so it's like, oh, you guys took like three months on this book. You literally basically gave it a yellow label. You know? Yeah. Like they actually wrote like they wrote Roy Thomas. There's no way it did. It wasn't fake. Nobody gave a shit. The guy didn't okay, even, no, you know what I mean. Nobody's speaking of Roy Thomas signature. Oh, dude. No. Hey, don't don't hate my con right now, okay? I'm trying to get these things out. Um, okay, uh, here we go. We we're talking now. We talk about the sad stuff uh, over the weekend. Um, again, they didn't announce. I don't think I, I haven't read it up but they haven't announced uh, our Gen V actor Chance Perdomo uh, passed away. Twenty seven motorcycle accident. Now, uh, yeah. I didn't hear any uh, details about it. They just yeah, that didn't either. Sad. That's just sad, dude. And it's, it wasn't one of those April Fool's things. This was like the thirty no. first or thirty. Yeah, it was before. Yeah, yeah. that's a suck. Yeah. Plus, yeah, and those are. I like both those shows a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude was a great part of both of those shows. I mean, really seemed like he, his career was on the climb. Um, had a lot to live for, a lot of life in front of him. So it's really, really shitty to, to hear about you know, yeah. going out, going out in a motorcycle accident. Yeah, I didn't um, learn to ride those early enough, and I have since decided it is it is been too late. I have friends trying to get me ten hours. It's like, dude, I'll fuck up. So yeah. for me, like I, I know I, I will. Permit. My bones yeah. don't heal anymore. They everything heals slow on me. I'm not. I'm not Wolverine at this point. So I, I got my permit, but like I was talking to my wife and stuff. A kid now is a whole different. Problem. Yeah, but it's you know, for map. me, it's like if I lived in a more rural area, you know, like out west, maybe where it wasn't it's, you know, it was like NASCAR speed ring. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, probably have a bike where I just tootle around, but yeah, not, no, yeah, it's not not in Atlanta. I would yeah. never like you're you're asking to become a speed bump. Yeah, too many shitty drivers in the world, dude. And the ones that the scooter people in Europe that's what's crazy. You've been to like Barcelona or something, 
and the way the dude every car is an inch from each other and like don't care all their cars have dents i don't think they report like scratches they just bump into each other and just call it a day my yeah. buddy was just in <laughs> vietnam and he was saying the same thing he was like everybody rolls a uh, moped or a bike because it's like wealthy to have a car so there's like a million motorbikes just flying around vietnam oh yeah now like yeah thailand vietnam like you know most of that part of asia it is just absurd like the how close they get to each other and like mopeds and bikes like cutting in like you can do like moped and bike ubers there in thailand and other places and it's just like no i would never like these like these guys are just like cutting in between cars splitting the lanes and stuff i'm like yeah no, we're, we're not doing that yeah and even the steadier ones i saw my i got a guy a big biker dude and he was like and his April Fool's today was the he had a picture of like a slingshot and he's like excited to say stable in my older age and <laughs> Harleys are gone. But uh I don't know. It's funnier if you know him, I guess. Uh we learned this from our, our buddy Christopher over in the other Beyond Wednesday's chat. Um Mark M D Bright, uh longtime DC Marvel Otters passed away today, also uh, sixty-eight. Quantum, creative co-creator of Quantum and Woody. Uh, he did some G.I. Joe, uh, real American hero stuff. Um, he, he did uh, Spider-Man vs. Wolverine, I believe, also. Yeah, that's in the background there. Sweet. Yeah. But too bad. A lot, a lot of those kind of early artists are getting up there, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not even early, early. Yeah. Dude, when I try to do math in my head about the age of just general things, I'm yeah. like, son of a bitch. You, you forget you're in your mid forties until you do the math. Officially, the wrong side of forty. <laughs> five you're rounds never... up, five rounds up to ten. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I I I was I've been thinking all day since we talked about this at least in the chat. What I was going to say about this next story, I, I, we'll see how this comes out. But, um. So obviously, um, Ed Piscor has been in like the news for other terrible things, but, uh. He uh he it's not reportedly he did pass away today at forty one confirmed by his family. Uh, uh it you know I I'm not saying his allegations and stuff it's like you know I'm not saying he needs to get off but it's just like the whole cancel culture thing kind of you know, kill off you know what I'm saying I'm not saying he needs to get off scot free or not pay for what he's done yada 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 but it's, it's also uh, inappropriate comments yeah. like it and no one's gonna say that they're appropriate yeah. in his in his suicide letter he wrote about the context mm-hmm. of that i can't and seen is a lot of the context around it wasn't wasn't posted yeah. i'm just not i'm not gonna say oh yeah like fine that's okay but we're not talking about um an actual like some sort of actual relationship or anything like that with the with the child and they bring up you know age of consent she actually legally was I'm not here to debate what's appropriate and what's not. Sounds inappropriate to me, but yeah. and at the same time, with the other girl saying that he he does all this stuff, he wants to, you know, he left the supposedly left the trail of text messages and things that show that that wasn't the thing and that they did have a sexual relationship mm-hmm. and that he thought fizzled out. And so, to the best of his knowledge, so somebody mad at him. And I'm not here to judge any of them. And it seems like to me, it seems like for most people, shit like this is kind of going away. Um, not going away, but time time is starting to heal. Like you've got, I don't know, Shane on uh, SNL, mm-hmm. thing, things like that. And it's, I, so I just, I think it's, I think it's sad to have a guy feel like this was his only, his only, uh, his only way out his only penance yeah. because this hurts you know um i don't know about you guys I mean, we've all known somebody and and some of us i've known a good amount of people uh, um uh yeah without an even recent very recent like in my life that i don't want to I, I don't need to get into but the the pain that is passed on to the people around you is what um sucks even worse than than almost like losing that life so i don't know uh, all i gotta say is it it seems drastic and he obviously he obviously touched some people 
you know, we've got Rob and Rob had a five minute video that uh, someone posted in, um, in one of the discords, I have a hard time keeping them straight, that I did post a link to, and it wasn't, um, it, you know, and some of it was about the mob mentality and things like that. We saw J. Scott Campbell saying that there's maybe more, like, uh, the story, like, it doesn't, it just didn't sit well with them. I don't think it should, and that was on comment on, actually, on this uh, tweet that Rob had. Uh, so, I don't know what's it's sad it's uh i don't know if it seemed necessary but other people talked about him coming out of let's say similar sadness uh, not that i have any idea why or how because we can't know um i can say it was too much but also being alive tomorrow was too much for him so no. i don't know yeah I don't, I don't know where to put it i just i think it's sad i think it's sad i don't think any of us will ever know the whole story it feels drastic and it, it just it it really fucking really fucking sucks you know and uh i hope nothing 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 terrible or worse or anything like that comes out about comes out about the guy that shows this uh shows that there were some actual like like you know being just constantly being called a a, a pedophile for uh <laughs> and <laughs> for no accounts of uh pedophilia it just seems fucking terrible well the thing too to me is like do those people again I, i'm not saying it's right wrong or indifferent i'm just saying do those people who make those comments like do they go to like a local comic book store or their friends and say like i posted this look what i posted like i got them like i just don't understand the whole yeah and i i spent i see too much shit on twitter um and i don't I uh, I like that you can. It's okay, I guess. I like you can mostly say the shit that you want, but it the amount of bullshit from and you don't need to be a verified account. If you look at at Big Leg, you see it says Sean Leggett. It's got a picture of me, and like and it says I like the Raiders, right? And I like comic books. Like you're like, oh, that's that guy. And look, the fucking that's that guy. You know, so I feel I don't need to pay for a check mark, and I never would have got one, but uh, yes. maybe if you give me one, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, so it's like that, and there's just you know the troll community can be it's such a problem, and I and I, you know, and I think that every generation can do it. You know, I think ours, some of us you know, we grew up um, only being able to say shit to people's faces. Like, and you know, pass a note in class, you know, make a phone call and talk shit or something like that. We didn't have to, yeah, we didn't, we didn't do it. So I like to hopefully think that a lot of stuff that I'll, that I'll say, and I, and, you know, if I'm picking on a bad actor who's like, if I'm like, like Ezra, Ezra Miller kind of seems like a jerk off. He doesn't give a shit about me, Yeah, <laughs> but like in, in a, in comic books, and what I've always said, it's you know we're um, it is small, incestuous. We're 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 small. You can meet if all if comic books are your thing, you can meet your you can meet your heroes. You can meet your favorite artists. You can't go meet your favorite actor. You can't meet your favorite baseball player. Could you finally could you find a signing possibly something like that? But and you know things are getting a little tougher. And the George not so, signing at the local. Uh, uh, yeah, Boys and girls club. if someone yeah. is, yeah, the people who influence you, and, and I think art is different than um, things like sports. Uh, this is just a small community that you can do that with. That's why I said when you get known for ripping people off or passing off, or when we give shit about what not sellers saying, um, oh, retail on this book's $59.99. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, you got it first deal for $38. It's their back stock they couldn't fucking sell. They're lying to you. Like, it's so. And that shit, most of them, flame, most of them flame out, and that and that's how this goes. So I just think I think it's small. So I think, and clearly, comics was this guy's life, like period. That, that was this guy's life. So I'm just yeah. There's no, there's no. This is not a good. This is not a good outcome. Nobody should be celebrating this uh, for whatever you want to say. And if anybody has more details or want to tell me tell me I'm wrong, that's that's fine too. But that's this. This is my opinion on this. I'm not going to try to try to justify anything. But it's not. It's not like they raided his house with kitty porn and dead bodies. You know. So that's my feeling. I don't know what anybody else will. 
Yeah. I mean, this is one of those ones where it's like, if if there's more to it, then there's more to it. Um, like, like, let the, like, let the process, like, naturally come out, right? Like, you know, it's all, like, everybody wants to be the first to scoop it, and, like, I'm the one who, like, it's like, no, man, let, you know. It's the same thing we talk about when, like, when accusations happen, it's like, oh, they're guilty. It's like, well, I mean, you know, a lot of people got walked back on on things, you know, because they said they weren't, you know. I mean, again, like, I mean, I, I wasn't staying in the loop of everything that was going on with the allegation stuff. I became aware of it on the flight back here. I'll say I met the men at San Diego Comic-Con last year. Um, I appreciate his work. And, like, at least in this scenario, I'm not saying separate the person from the work. You know, I'm just saying that I had an appreciation for his work. I read it. It was enjoyable. If he made poor decisions that ended up, you know, putting him in the crosshairs. Like, I mean, to a certain degree, I mean, me and my partner talked about this in the ride home. Like I was, like she was saying like in this day and age, like, like this, this wasn't stuff from like Twitter, like Twitter circa 2009. Mm-hmm. Like this was like conversations during COVID. So you kind of got to be like more sensible and realize that like there's, there's receipts on everything. Like just, don't put yourself in that position. Don't don't do it to yourself. Like if, if it truly is an innocent conversation, like make sure that it is very clearly an innocent conversation. Um, so yeah, that's that's my my two cents on it. Is that not, just don't put yourself in those positions to end up getting crucified like that in the court of public opinion because people will do it to you, and you know there's always somebody looking for your head. So. Yeah, and I, I just wish you know I hate to say it, I, I wish cancel culture was more uh, infectious on things that mattered more. Not saying this doesn't matter. I'm just saying like, shit that we get screwed on every day about you know government shit. You know, like let's if you're gonna troll something, let's troll something that you know yeah change the world and make it a better place. Yeah, I agree with Chris. Be be <laughs> be aware. Be smarter. You know, and yeah, hopefully, I mean, hopefully that I mean, hopefully that's the extent and. Hopefully, oh, no. that's not, hopefully, hopefully we've seen all the results. Let's put it. Let's put it that way, man. You know, so, COVID Why did suck. Fuck. <laughs> all right. Um. So that's that's a sad. So we'll uh, we'll go on to let's. I didn't really make a, a, a thing for uh, the WonderCon stuff. Uh, so we got. Talk about it. Right, we'll take a Saturday night. We'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I mean, so I'll, I'll jump into the, the one account. Oh, talk. My wife texted me. She goes, you can leave the house. Stop telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, son. But you, you are growing a, a pretty uh, suspicious mustache there. The mustache <laughs> game is, uh, the mustache game is, uh, it's, it's on point. I, I got to sh- shave it down a little here so I can reinforce the, uh, you know, this. I told people this commands respect. Okay. I walk into places. <laughs> people are just a cop here. That's what that means. Yeah, one hundred percent. You're on, you're undercover, bro. So yeah, basically, that's what everybody said. Everybody's like, you got like a seventies cop stash, and people like on the golf course were like, "Dude, are you a cop?" I'm like, Could be. Yep, cop on vacation, dude. That's how I grew up the beard. Yeah. So do you? Uh, <laughs> you guys went to WonderCon. Like, yeah. My first question, because I've just been looking at the bigger cons around here, and they seem to be kind of drifting to the 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 celebrity guest crap. Did you go to Target? Did WonderCon stay is it staying more comics than most? WonderCon is actually no, I'd say WonderCon is recessing back to I won't say it's more it's it's not it's not maybe not necessarily going back towards comics, but it's damn sure not celebrities. Like so the reason I say that is is okay, so for anybody who knows, like I'm you know volunteer con staff and doing it now since 2018. So I get a little bit of like the behind the scenes of things. So this year, we did not have anybody attending. You can see it. We didn't have a major sponsor for the lanyards. We didn't have a major sponsor for the badges themselves. We didn't have a major sponsor for the venue. So normally when you approach WonderCon on the outside of the Anaheim uh, Convention Center, it's usually like WonderCon and then whatever thing paid the money to be also up there. Like it was uh, some... Uh, I think Chinese action flick last year, like the Knights of something or other. Yeah. That was the big one. In previous years, it's been, you know, the boys or whatever it may be. 
Amazon did the lanyards last year. Walking Dead has done them in previous years and so on and so forth. Um, none of that. So it seems to be maybe reverting back to being like, you know, what it was prior to or like big organizations realizing that there's money to be made by doing moderate prom self-promotion through a WonderCon. Um, so that's the way it kind of felt on the floor. Um, I mean, like, you know, Casper Van Dien was like, had a booth and was doing signings and stuff like that. And a couple of other people like that were there. But generally speaking, like WonderCon, I think might be sh like shrinking back down again. We'll see what what San Diego looks like. And that'll be the real like indicator of where things are kind of going. But yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And because and also San Diego last year was without Marvel and shit. People actually were. We thought there was more people on the floor spending money rather mm -hmm. than standing in line. Which oh, yeah. to us is a good thing. And San Diego is so damn packed. I don't give a shit if there's Marvel. Like, as comic sellers, we'll make more money with announcements because we're always trying to buy, you know, ahead of time. So, but so other than that, it doesn't matter. But there was used to be, they used to have panels it's, uh, similar, like at WonderCon. I remember doing, was it even Aquaman or was it? I think it was. But with the panel, I remember seeing just Jason Momoa walking around WonderCon. You know, That's what I was gonna say. and it used to be bigger where those check-in lines are. They used to have to overflow into that place. Well, I, yeah. my my kids kept asking, "We're gonna go to IndyCon. We're gonna go to IndyCon." I'm like, "That's what we're gonna no. ask you." I, I was it last because, weekend also. Um, it was two weeks. I think because it used to be on Easter. Easter. That's why they it was got before cheap. Easter this year. Okay, this was but, also Easter. It didn't help. No, but it, I was like, it, all they're promoting is guests. And there was like 50 guests. And I'm like, dude, that all that's going to be is people standing in line for signings and cosplay. And if there's a few dealers there, maybe. But I'm like, I'm not paying to get in. I'm not what, doing it. What's the size of San Diego compared? I mean, or is, what's the size of WonderCon to San Diego? Is it like one-tenth, I guess? I don't know. I mean, I know San Diego's massive, but is it like half the people? that like Because it's like 15%, 20%? Yeah, yeah like, I mean... But nowhere, nowhere. You can get anywhere. wherever you want to go very though. easily, and honestly, the turnout isn't as good. You could have, like I was, I kept saying, Friday and Saturday for sure. Saturday would have been sold out two months ago, pre pre COVID 2020. 2020 was probably sold out um, before they because it, it was it was that there was year. A lotto. I mean, I had to, I was going to go in 2020. It, it was yeah, you were gonna go. Brian Wood was gonna go. Uh I had and I'm sad. Nobody ever comes to the fucking West Coast to see me. And I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, except Chris. And then I'm like, I'm like, dude. So I I was like, yeah, I was all excited. We get to have some fun over here. And then it just didn't. Um, and then you know, that was it was literally, I think, three weeks yeah. after COVID or something like that was the schedule. And I'm like, dude, two weeks flat in the curve. They better not cancel WonderCon. My friends are coming out. Yeah, right. yeah, that's. I think it went a little further than that, but anyway, here we here, here we are four years later, and the place hasn't the fucking con hasn't recovered. No, so it was a. Uh, I, I don't know, man. It, it it's a good. It's it's my. It's still my favorite. It's easy to get in and out of. There's a good amount of hotels that are literally there because it's across the street from Disneyland and it's a convention center, so they built no, the hotels okay. around it. So it's very simple. You can get cheap ish. Hotels, I got a good deal on Sheraton. Marriott and Hyatt are going to be ex like expensive. Uh, Marriott's kind of where the party's at a little more. Um, like as far as the lobby and all the, the people stay there. And it's it's the closest front door. Nah, it's probably tied, but whatever. Sheraton's, but I'm really next door. I extra like 90 second walk to my the door of my hotel, which doesn't matter. It rained this year. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like the promotion. See, the thing is, I don't like when people aren't showing up. The only freaking publisher we had, um, the only what we would consider, you know, for comics, like, you know, bas basically I, major was freaking IDW. Yeah. They don't even bring their shit. They just have this big old thing with some con exclusives and some people standing in there. They don't even bring up the big, the IDW thing. We got no Marvel, no DC, no image. They didn't bring right? a banner. And it's like, though, yeah, they don't even, dude, they brought like a table banner. And I'm like, what the? What do you think? And, they were us? Yeah. Dude, I'm like, we us. can now do that. Stranger Comics is like the biggest comic company there. <laughs> <laughs> and how are they not going to do their home con? They're, they're booth packed the what? entire time with Sebastian just staring into people's eyes. Uh, are you, are I you do miss seeing that guy. He just makes you feel like, oh, absolutely. Dude, I own your soul. Yeah. Is absolutely. there a lot of local guys that go to San Diego that are like WonderCon too? Are the same local guys there? I guess, I guess. 
Yeah, so, I don't want to. I'll say a lot of people who regularly will do like one of the ones that the booths that you know me and Leigh actually picked up a decent bit of our stuff from. That guy was like, he doesn't do San Diego because it's just the return on the investment. It, it yes. costs so much to well, first off, you probably are buying out somebody who is an existing like like slot holder. Like it's that to that point where some it's like getting tickets to you know to see things for Green Bay. It's like somebody has to die for you to be able to like get, <laughs> yeah, get tickets. To, yeah, so it's the same way like you end up having to buy out somebody else's um, like get, like boost spot to be able to boof up there, and it ain't cheap. And so like with the hotel costs, the travel costs, the uh, actual you know cost of having a booth there and things like that, you've got. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but I say you probably got to make six or seven grand if not probably knocking on 10 to break even at san exactly. diego yeah exactly and then uh, are you i'm not even sure are you if you're including travel costs depending on where you're coming from that, that i mean it's just it's nuts to make your nut there dude like if you're like i know i know a couple guys comic book universe this guy ryan he had a small booth there and i don't i'm surprised he got a booth and so he was uh but no i don't think he Something came up. They're like, "Hey, they called me because he sold in Ontario at Comic Con Revolution, which is small. That's a fun one. Everybody wants to find some books, but I don't recommend like getting on an airplane. That's uh, next month. But um, they uh, so the guy gets in there and he's like, so they gave him a cheap booth that was small, but again, he's making a three hour drive. Yeah. So to fill a three hour, if you got a deal, they're trying to fill the space. They got a comic dealer, you know." Um, I look, I really enjoy San Diego. The gas lamp's one of the best downtowns in the world. In the world. So your food, I might have a cocktail or two sometimes. Uh, the weather in San Diego, the worst you're ever going to get is rain. It's never going to be cold. There could be maybe be wind, but you're not. A bad day in San Diego is like 68. It's one of those weird weather pockets where it's like that all year round. And so there, it's going to be great. Plus, it's in July, so it's generally it's not – if it hit if it hits 90 that's extreme 85 is almost extreme for there so yeah walking around you know sweating alcohol with a backpack on could be a little could be a little warm but you know it's what's worth what you, it, you get what you pay for it's pretty it's it's worth it it's a, when, it's a good place when you said ontario i thought you meant ontario canada no everybody does and then i also and then i go i try to clarify i go no ontario ca and then i realize i'm the one who lives in california so yeah. that's like normal for me to see if you say and Ontario, our, CA, CA, everybody else thinks you're talking yeah. about Ontario, Canada. Yeah, you should just say Chino, I guess, because Chino's kind of close to Ontario. <laughs> yeah, uh, the old uh, the yeah. the fake Nano Two and guy, or Rancho or Rancho Cucamonga. Right? Yeah, the the Rancho Con. <laughs> I say Comic Con Revolution. I think that uh, I don't know, but whatever. It's not that one's small, but I like it. It's good. It's good for buying for sure. And if I was gonna set up anywhere, I'd set up there oh. just on. Uh, uh, just on, just on, um, uh, like Chris said, ROI, because I could, you could, you can actually make the money. I don't have enough product. Well, I don't like have enough product to give away five thousand dollars worth of product before I start in yeah. San Diego. But that's that's like us, I'd right? We, keep those books. So what, well, me so and you did cons, right? Or us three, right? We did cons. It's like, what can we do that's budget friendly that we can get decent return on? Like Indianapolis, when we when me and yeah, yeah, we get like, in there for four hundred bucks in a, a hotel. Yeah. And it was like back in the day, we were like, we were just fucking nobodies, me, Z, and uh, our yeah, boy. Yeah, they, they had a lot of people. And yeah. Baltimore, I mean, that was a little more pricey, but yeah. what was that, maybe 1500 or something? Maybe not even that? Like us, we we hit, we tried to go for um, Heroes Con, and we fucking absolutely took a, a fucking L on that. Yeah. Because nobody really wanted to buy anything. They wanted dollar books at the time. Yeah, I don't know. So what were the highlights of WonderCon, gentlemen? Yeah. Um, Dinesh uh, had a panel for a bad idea, so I got to see a bunch of their like upcoming stuff. Um, one of the pickups that I think both of us has is a exclusive comic that they gave out for attending the panel. Um, <clears throat> so is, is bad idea doing comics again? They're off the donuts. Uh, I talked to Dinesh uh, over Instagram. We talked about Action Comics one. Me and Dinesh. It's selling at Heritage right now. Yeah, I think it hit one point eight. Million, I think is what that book ended up selling for. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a lot more. Am I crazy? I mean, it might be more. I mean, I know I got an email from CGC like doing you know stuff. That might have been three fees. 
But yeah, there was, there was an email that came out actually while I was on the plane that was like self-promoting like some of their upcoming partner auctions and things like that. And they mentioned that Action One that finished at one point eight two million. This one, um, eight and a half, right? Still going? No. Okay, yeah. So this, so this one just hadn't finished yet. So yeah, they referenced the one that was finished at this point. God, that's a fucking crazy number. Remember when the nine zero went for three a few years ago? Yeah, Dinesh. Like, I don't, I don't know what he bid, so I won't, I won't say that. So Dinesh, uh, Dinesh told. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't ask. Oh no, Dinesh. Uh, no, D- me and Dinesh were talking on Instagram. This motherfucker was like, "Yo, maybe I'll bid on it." So I'm laughing. I'm like, "You fucking savage." But yeah, so I mean, that was cool. Um, I, again, I was working most of it, so I didn't get a chance to like do any. I mean, I'm really ever doing panels at a WonderCon anyway, but I know like. The cast of X Men '97 were there. Um, some other shows were, you know, there doing their promotion. Now that we're not in the strikes, so they can actually promote, you know, their television shows and movies and things like that. Um, I mean, there was some it's mentioned cosplay floating around the building as always. That's nothing about WonderCon. WonderCon's big on cosplay, so the rain kind of like shut a lot yeah. of it down. I mean, it was cold. It was like like unseasonably cold for Anaheim. I mean, it was dropping down. There was times where I got in at like 6.45, 7 to start my ship, and it was like 53 degrees outside. Oh, boy, 53. <laughs> Me and Z are like, fuck, 53. We'll take 53, I mean, the shorts are coming out, buddy. Let's go. I mean, no, like, reason. I know, I know you boys. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm coming from, like, it's, it is firmly spring here in the South. Like, I got back off the plane, it was 74. Like yeah, yeah. N- nighttime sundown. It is seventy four right now. In, it, in it's Georgia. freezing tomorrow night on us. Yeah, it's gonna snow again. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, I got there and I didn't bring anything but shorts, and I was like, I'm kind of freezing my ass off here because, like, I'm just not used to being in the fifties anymore because I haven't seen fifty in like probably a month. Maybe doesn't two. matter, man. If I'm yeah, going to you- if I'm going to a con, it's shorts, dude. Because once you get in that building. There's too much fucking body heat. I still remember. Oh, there's a lot, dude. Yeah, Drew, Drew's shorts and t-shirt. He's like, man, he's like, he, but he's there at like nine, eight something in the morning. I hadn't even left my house yet, and I live almost two hours away. And I'm like, I was running, I was running a little behind schedule. And he's like, man, I, I forgot everything. I'm gonna get my house. I'm in shorts. I don't have a sweater. It's cold. And I'm like, then why were you two fucking hours early? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, he's freezing. So yeah, I bought uh, these because these are. Uh, I bought these for golf. But, uh, yeah, so that was. Uh, but it was yeah. So he didn't. He didn't even come. <laughs> the cut off the zip off. No, they're just regular pants. No, oh. oh, oh, stretchy pants, dude. Stretchy, yeah, stretchy dude, pants, dude. Drink, they were nice. I don't even try my my Levi's are stretchy pants now. I'm like, I'm I'm here for that. Somebody want to get hit at the roundhouse wearing a pair of these? <laughs> <laughs> but um. So yeah, I mean the con was the con was solid. I mean again, like it was good seeing my people out there hanging out with Led, hanging out with Dinesh. So it was good to yeah, you know, have some and again found a booth that I actually do was like trying to so I guess I'll speak to that element of it. Um people still just have this sunk cost fallacy where they're like thinking they're gonna get their money back. Like dudes are true. I mean, don't get wrong, there are people who like the book is listed for a certain price and then they finally like and, and you actually like are serious about buying. Like I had one book where I'll show you my pickups. It was listed for a thousand, and like initial conversation, dude just came off two fifty off the top. Yeah, like like without even like me. I was like, well, what's the best you can do on this book? Immediately two fifty off the top. And I was like, okay, well that's way more reasonable now. Um, did you do to me, and did you say, well, can you go any lower than that? That's an idea. Oh, no. That's a sneaky link. <laughs> oh no, I absolutely do. I'm like whatever number you just said. I'm gonna ask for anywhere from fifty to hundred dollars more off, probably. Right. Yeah. Uh, you gotta try, and then usually people hit you with the well, let's be in the middle. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of guys who were in positions where I because I mean, I sold them books and I saw the books that I sold them, and I'm just like, you are you're screwed, you're stuck because yeah. I sold you that book for 25,000. I know it's worth 13 or 14 right now, and you've got you know 27 on it. And I was like, you, you're fucked. I'm sorry. Are like, you? Did, was there a lot of trading? Like, did you? Can you? Did you? I know. You, did you bring any books with you? I didn't bring anything with me because I just didn't have. Any, I mean, a lot I of don't do stuff, that that often. Yeah, my stuff's at golden right now, so I was like a lot of the bigger stuff I had that um, was more trade baby realm. I sent off to golden instead of trying to trade because I was like trades. Like guys, still a lot of guys still want to win on trades in a way that's like dumb. Like yeah. they still want to like 
devalue your books, overvalue their books. So it's like they've got con market on their book, but they want to give you towards trade GPA. I was like, well, then bring your shit down to GPA. Like, you know, your book's two grand above market, but you want to price mine to GPA. It's like, mm, that's it's not how that works. So like when I do find booths who are down to actually trade out, right? I'm like, cool. And there are people who are having that, who are willing to have that conversation. I just didn't bring anything with me. Um, but there's one guy I'm definitely like, he's got a, uh, a Hulk one that I've got my eye on that I'm definitely bringing some books to try and trade my way into. Um, but yes, I mean, yeah, like guys just feel like they, they need to win. And so, yeah, I started sending stuff to Golden because Golden is giving me, you know, like they're only taking, they're taking single digits, you know, percentage off the top of my books. And I'm like, and, and then they also gave me part of the late fees. Like when somebody like drug their feet on paying, they gave me, I got 90 odd percent don't want to give out the exact number but i got 90 odd percent of everything including the late fees yeah, you can't at that do point, that anywhere like yeah i mean it's I think, a no-brainer at that point i think link yeah, sure, one dude. of them's 10 percent maybe but that's that's it and then maybe my comic shop might be 10 or 11 percent but I think they're, no they're like eight, they, eight uh, depends on their number. i think they're six on other stuff because they're trying to be more competitive depends on the number you're at i checked like, recently because i was con- considering that I mean, theoretically, an easy way to do stuff is it depends. I like to control my own inventory is part of the problem. Yeah. Not now, don't be wrong. If I want to get, yeah, if I had that deal with Golden and that was a, the type of books I thought would sell there is what I was moving. Yeah, of course, I'd try to do something like that. But like, like just the everyday shit, like my eBay shit, you could just, you could send it to there and not yeah. worry about it. But it's, it's harder to deal with offers or yeah, with their so auctions hard. and then what people look for. And then they do cross list them on eBay. I feel like they don't need their eBay listings are like fucked. Yeah, if you look suck. up like I don't know, just uh, I'm not even don't even think Spider Man 22 variant, right? And you're not getting an MCS results because they'll have like 22B, yeah, with the B attached to the 22. I'm like, you guys can't fix that so people can find the shit. Yeah, you know, know? I've, I've had you stuff tack on the money. Me. The, it's just the, it's just it's frustrating, but it's the best it's the best buy it now deal. I think that you get. Yes, you can't do much better. That's all I mean. Yeah, I, I yeah, think I'm gonna spend. So, I think and, I'm gonna I, and I like the people. I like I buy a lot of books there, or I have in the past anyway. I bought tons of books there. Half my inventory is just doing the fucking Walker refresh when I was at work. Holy shit! I forgot. I I actually just packaged a book, and it. The guy, his thing says Malaysia, but the shipping address was Arlington, Texas. And his note says, Set, please write a note on the book saying, consign for blank and blank. So it's going to MCS, and this guy is just putting a note on it to consign with them directly. I mean, it's smart. I didn't, so. I didn't know they did that, but I wonder if it's some service they offer for certain people. Yeah, I didn't, I, I, Actually, I didn't you know, know that either. This guy was international, but I was like, oh. damn. So, you know, I mean, for us, so like, yeah, so they were, what was the girl's name there forever? We talked to her all the time, like, when we were doing big consignments and stuff, and she would be like, yeah, no problem. Estee. You know, Estee yeah, Estee. yeah, she would be like, yo, she's like, just send us the books, make sure you have your name on them, we'll check them in. She's like, and she'll like, she'll like, just, if you shoot her an email or a note or call her, she's, she's on top of it. Yeah, I think someone else has been answering, um, was answering for a little while too. I don't know, but I will say that she, um, uh, they, I did notice because again, I was gonna, I was thinking about this. They have a go consign any CV, CGC or CBCS slab, so you can literally just write like I don't know Star Wars Five CGC nine point oh, like if it's graded, they'll just do that, and you don't have to fill out all the forms. You you just fill it out on one like literally in a text box, hit hit submit, and then print it with your freaking order and whatever's in the box, they'll just put it in there for you. And you like if you I mean? can't find it, she'll be like, "Don't worry about it. Just put it close to what you can get, and we'll figure it." You know what I'm saying? They, they, yeah, like all the weird variants and shit back in the day. They're like, uh huh. They have shit loaded back in the day. Uh, cool. uh, let's, let's go I on did the have pickup. this. Uh, I did have this. So if you want, I just sent if you send my Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was fucking fun. So, um. This is so we got so this is this is this is our hotel um at the at the Sheraton. Um so basically I went in, I so Marat Michaels, so he did he did do exclusives with um 
with uh with Drew there from One Comics. And he had some other ones. He had he had some different um some of the different books that he had. He had like the gold like Trump sneaker ones, but he had I didn't get this part from him because I forgot to ask him after, but he had he has two books that because he's he's not actually trying to do the political thing where it's like one side wins in one book and one side wins in the other and you just figure pick whatever you want. I had talking to this dude, he he doesn't give a shit. He's just trying to sell sell yeah. some sell some stuff that'll move in here. And so we're uh we're in here with that. So he was signing a signing a lot of these things and signing with Drew. So Drew got us a pizza. We had the CGC witness in there, Jesse. Um uh me and Clutch is hype watching eating pizza. Um, and you can see the NCAA in the back. So this is pretty cool. Marat's a super cool guy. And then I didn't realize that he's been doing these. The poo books have been around for like 10 years already. And, uh, th- and they're kind of fun. And to be honest, I was always like, what is this? I, dude, I, when I first found out about these things. And apparently, I, I don't know when I found out about them, but it's been a while. I was like, what are these? You know, what are these? What are these dumb things? But I have had Drew working with this guy. Like, I basically, I've had to press or, you know, if they're metal and I don't even have to press it, I have to submit all these books. It's hard enough to figure out what to put in there. But honestly, a lot of them are pretty cool. Um, I, they're, they're good takes on, on some of the art stuff. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea. You probably already either don't care or if you're like us and big, like, um, I don't know. We really like comics, so this isn't stuff that we probably are gonna be like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna add to my poo collection." But like, it's there's there's some pretty cool stuff uh, on there. So, and honestly, that guy is cool as shit. Uh, so yeah, we had we had a good time. That was a fun uh, fun setup. It was nice. Uh, yeah, nice to meet him. We got in there. Drew's a little frazzled, just running around the room. We got two hours and stuff of him live. So, like, are you okay to drive home? <laughs> I wasn't drunk. I was like, relax, man. He didn't come back the next day. Uh, so uh, that's it. I had to walk with in the rain to with Marat's books that he forgot that he forgot uh, <laughs> the next day going to the thing. Somehow they ended up in Drew's trunk. And Drew goes to leave, and he says, and everybody everybody's called it a night, but I'm bored. I'm on I'm on quasi vacation for me, and so I'm like, okay. Uh, Get me the books. We'll put them in my trunk, which is the you know the easy way to take them to the con in the morning without going to my room. And also, you're dropping me the dive bar on the corner, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna have a cocktail, and then I'm going to Denny's. <laughs> so uh, that was it. But yeah, so that was a that was a, that was a good one. A lot of digging. The the next day, uh, went out with uh, <clears throat> uh, I had a friend come to meet me, but. Uh, Went to dinner just at the uh, Marriott with uh, Dinesh and his crew. Then Chris met. Him. Chris was at dinner having a better dinner than I did. I had like appetizer meatballs and forgot to eat, but it was too late. And I was going to keep drinking and wanted to have some fun. So um, anyway, so Chris, yeah, Chris went up with me and my buddy Dinesh. Hit it, hit a, had a little, had some, had a good time. Had, had some more drinks. Um, that's it. We did the, we did the panel, like you said. Um, like he said, the next panel the next day, found some books and got out of there. So it was pretty good. I think Chris found more books than me, but I think I found more nine eights. So we'll see. Yeah, no, you definitely found more. I gotta more pay to grade them. But that's hey, but that's my game. We all know that. You're better, you're a lot better than they did. Let's uh let's get into it. So who, who wants to go first? Do you want to go to the two minute person up top up here? Because you only got two of them up there. No, you he has WonderCon first. I'll go last. Okay. All right, let's so go. I'll pop up first. All right, so Found this booth. Uh, I think the guy's name is Carl Weber. Um, real good dude. Like decent bit of like good books. Like both in his in his boxes and on his wall, he had just good stuff. So just to pop it off, so we got a you know a little first Doc Samson action. That's the Sunday guy, right? Yes. That you took me to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, got a few, I got like five books from him. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got probably about like ten or fifteen. So we got first Doc Samson. Uh, we have a ASM 300 newsstand from that same guy. Again, Ooh. the ASM 300 was under $200. And that guy like, he liked you, dude. <laughs> I did okay. You did way better. You also found better books. So that- yeah. So um, let's see. Is this the one I got from him? Yeah. So this is the one I got from him also. So 252 um, newsstand. 
It's got 180 on here. Damn sure didn't pay 180. Uh, found another booth from a different guy, though. Another newsstand. This one is a lot cleaner. Probably a 9.6 or a 9.8 contender. Um, paid closer to that 150 mark on this guy. Um, let's see. Man, who's else? got all these goddamn newsstands? I know. So that other booth, again, where I found the cleaner books. I had everything. Spider-Man, uh, so we have the Secret Wars 8, non-newsstand, going back to Homeboy who had the booth with everything, newsstand. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, first Weapon Alpha, newsstand. Um, <laughs> yeah. First Dazzler, newsstand. Oh, why let this guy go first? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Uncanny 132, just like classic cover, newsstand. Uh Rachel Summer's appearance in Death of Wolverine, Days of Future Past, newsstand. Um, this God, guy I haven't like, seen that book in ages. Dude had like eight copies of the first appearance of Gambit, and I just don't pass that up. So <laughs> want to buy from him. regular, and again, $18. But again, we worked out a bulk deal. Um, so it was $18 for the regular one and $18 for the newsstand. So it's like, Dead. Might, might as well just take them. Um, again, guy with the, the nice books. Um, First appearance of Rogue. Mm-hmm. Again, we were able to negotiate down a bulk deal on the three books I got from that guy. Uh, this is the Dinesh um, panel book. So it's the Hero Trade uh, color version that is exclusive to the con. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Back to that same guy's booth. So we got First Squad Supreme. Okay. We have newsstand. Kitty Pride joins the X Men. Newsstand also. Um, so this was funny. So this book was slid in with a um, Avengers. So it was Avengers forty two on one side, and then I flipped it over and I was like, "Hey man, I don't really want the forty two. I kind of just want the forty three. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "All right, cool, whatever. Yeah, you can. I'll find a back and board for the forty two. So yeah, first Red Guardian. I think I paid forty bucks for this. Um, and now we're getting into the theme. So we have Medusa. Same booth. Good guy. Um, the Inhumans. Okay. <laughs> Black Bolt. Oh, boy. The well, rest of the fucking can't... Inhumans. <laughs> that stuff can't get any colder, so. Yeah, hey, right. You're going. But, I mean, at, like, 40 bucks, be- like, before the discount, yeah. I- I'll take it. Like, I mean, I'm not leaving keys like that just hanging out. No, I mean it, uh, it is at the bottom. So the uh, the Cree Century first appearance, I, I'll take it forty dollar book. Him forty dollar book. <laughs> this is the crazy one. Seventy five dollars. Damn, oh, it's, it's complete. I mean, it's rough, but it's complete. Seventy five. Hey, that, that's only me at uh, when I went with George. I bought two of them for seventy five bucks, incomplete. It was like, well, yeah. fuck it, dude. I'll do give them to me. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, when I was like, yo, how much for this? He was like, mm, 75 something, right? I was like, yes, yes. I'm that was great. Yeah, that guy was, yeah, he was nicer to you than me. All right, and here's you'd already spent money. I wasn't <laughs> trying to. <laughs> so, again, trying to, because I bought some, some magazine sized books, I was like, well, I might as well get together a magazine submission. So, we have first appearance of Bam Dreadstar. Yeah. So, again, that was from that booth with the good, clean stuff. They were asking 60. Again, we worked out a, a deal for all those pickups. Um, first appearance of the new mutants because X Men 97 is making people care about these characters again, which is nice. Um, and a book that I've never, I've always wanted, but never stopped to like finally like track one down. And I finally said, fuck it. Nice. Oh, yeah, so yeah, that is what's the what's the rate rough grade on the vampy? I say it's probably seven five on a good day. Nice, maybe an eight. Nah, it's a hell of a grade. Yeah. So that is. Oh, and then of course the stuff I picked for my girl. So she's been on a big manga kick lately. So grabbed her Uzumaki and smashed by uh, Junjuri Ito. Nice. Or Junji Ito. Yeah. So a little hard reading for her because she's been on a big uh manga kick um as of late. So dude, yeah. that's that's true love carrying a hardback. Yeah, dude. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like luckily they fit perfectly into a spot in my in my bag, but yeah, I was like, God damn it, babe. Like, of course you want the 
the hard bound shit. So. Well, hey, it's better than that than my fucking wife who wants prints and fucking artwork when you got to keep it all fucking fresh to death. <laughs> if I weren't lazy, I would have made so much money on those Skybound hardcover Invincible damn things. But I was oh. like, they're too heavy. Because they had them yeah. in Baltimore for days, and I bought like one finally, and I'm like, I should have bought 10, but how are you going to get them home? All right, all right, well, so I actually, um, I found one place with like a lot, like a lot of cool vinyl. So some, some are reprints, some are, some aren't, but they all have good prices. So some of these will be display sometime soon. I can see them better out of the plastic. So this is one of my, one of my favorite albums ever is the, the first suicidal tendencies. Um, nice. Nice. this is their, uh, basically, um, yeah, so this is the first album. This is the songs that if you guys, anybody listens to ST, like um, Subliminal and stuff like that are on here. Uh, they actually played this full album when I saw them in Punk Rock Bowling in is it, is it Vegas. Still? Huh? Is it sealed still? Can you see them? No, is it sealed? Sealed. sealed. It is, but it's it, it's not an original pressing. Oh, okay. That's why, that's why it's cheap. Some of these will be displayed. This is going to be for a friend. Um, this is original, but a rare and limited color, and he got it because he's like one of the biggest NoFX fans in the world. Shout out to Aaron, and he doesn't watch, but I'll show him this after uh, coming this next one for his birthday. Yeah. So he got some NoFX <laughs> eating lamb. Nice. So sort of take if you know the heavy petting zoo. Yeah. It's he's basically um, on the lamb, and now this is this is this is a good opposite uh, opposite on there. Uh, I'm glad, and again, and the next one is a repress. Also, I don't give a shit. Some of these are gonna go on my freaking mantle. Yeah, I know John's gonna, uh, John's gonna love the, John's gonna love the next one. The oh Ivy yeah, demo of it. Beauty. So we've got the op Ivy with the demo, and uh, yeah, good stuff going on right here. So the energy oh, demo from '88 on freaking vinyl, and not, dude, not expensive. Pay cash, make a little deal. Uh, so. Yeah, pretty excited I mean, the about that. Image is iconic at this point. Hey man, if you, oh yeah, uh, it has to be. If you see any Yanni on vinyl, you you let me know, dude. <laughs> Yanni Gogolock live at the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> so the same as um same as this. It's blue. I wish it was maroon. But here's the don't here's the don't turn away. So this first face first album. Uh, these dudes actually go to my high school. I actually know their dad. Oh, but cool. uh, I saw them again at this this summer. Uh, so I've been a big face to face dude. That's James James went and saw. At one of the punk rock, there's a punk rock bar in downtown Indy. Mm-hmm. He saw uh, John knows my buddy James. He's not a, he's not a comic guy. He's uh, they have a fate. There's they're called Disconnected. It's a face to face cover band. Nice. That's how you know you're old, by the way. <laughs> That's yeah. how you fucking know you're old is when yeah. All right. Yeah, so, oh, um, and again That's with great. this 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 one's badass. The dudes, I can't believe I put it. I put it for sale. So here's a. A Danger Zone from China White from the 1982 press scene. Wow. This is, I don't even know the dead body on the cover, the real OG stuff, right? They're not as well known, but I was evil in the 90s. I could still see them. And uh, that's it. So this thing, this thing's sick. And he doesn't know. Like, I know how to clean this thing. <laughs> so I might do that, but I love that it's a I love the dirt with the China White dead body somewhere in LA, the cop cars. I, I, I just know, man. So that's I, you might my, just leave it. The other ones are fun. Yeah, I'll probably leave it, dude. It's not like sorry, my comic brain took over for a second. So yeah, I'm going through nineteen. And he's like, man, if you're gonna zone me, will you write China White in there so I know, like that it went? And I was like, uh, if it's Zell, do you have cell tax? And he's like, yes. I'm all. If it's cash, do you not have cell tax? And he says, yes. I said, well, I can write. I can write. I can write China White on the hundred dollar bill if you want. And he's like, I'll probably, he's, I'll probably get arrested if I get a hundred dollar bill with the China White written on it. <laughs> I was like, that's a good point. So uh, I found some cool music books. These are gonna be, these are gonna be gifts, and these are cool as hell, and they're cheap. Um, and they had medals, but all the ones I wanted the medals of the most that were out. So this is, uh, this is Sublime Metal nice. metal cover. Um, super cool. Um, this one saw Sublime last uh, last summer actually. Saw them three times in one month in like '96, but it was Brad. Yeah. He shot up at the show in Victorville in the back before he went in there. So I've seen him do drugs, and then he died. So big surprise. Uh, this, this, they threw this one in because it just came out, but it's their Iron Maiden. Huh. Um, I love their. So these are all be. Uh, here's a, a their Rob Zombie. 
That's a sweet cover. And these are cheap, so I bought I bought for the ones some I have a friend making a wall of stuff, and he's got comics and magazines on it, even though he's not a big collector guy. And so some of his bands are in here for sure. Same the same no effects guy is gonna get the uh, volume two. I need to look up more from this company because they had they had cool shit. And like uh and they know me. I'll try to nine point eight before their gifts and stuff. So sweet misfits on there. Uh, Doug's gonna get some Pantera. Uh <laughs> All right, Doug's also gonna get some Slayer. These are freaking awesome. These are two dollars. The artwork's awesome. Yes, dude. These are two dollars. Some Mastodon and some Primus <laughs> and another Sublime. Okay. I just started making a pile and talking to the guy. I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" I think that the metal was thirty. The other ones are two dollars. I was not even pretending like I was going to try to get a deal or something like that. I'm like, dude, here, take take my money, please. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so this is all just just one dude. And like I said, most of, most of this stuff, unless it's rare, like I go through it. I'm at dork now. I have a flashlight in my pocket. Oh. It's brighter than my phone light. But I'm trying to. I don't. I'm. I'm. Your Paul. I want your. I want your nine eights or your rare shit really cheap or stuff that I really liked. It's cheap. So that's what's going on now. Are you so, pulling out? Are you pulling out like dollar books and inspecting the fronts and backs before you buy them? Oh, not the, not the. Okay, I will say, like, I unless it's unless it's over like forty or fifty bucks, I'm not looking yeah. back. I'm dealing with the front, and and if the price is right, if the price is yeah. right, because if I'm like if it's only worth some money, so uh, some of these chose you don't see that much. So grab some Shannon the She Devils for okay. the for the chos, yeah. right stuff. Pretty yeah. cool. The first one was number one. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah. So um, anyway, so those are those are good shows. Uh, cheap shit, but still probably ninety art term. Yeah. Don't find those as much. Also, same here. Love this book. Well, it's absolutely flawless, by the way. And these are cheap, 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 cheap. Same with Catwoman. Yeah, but if you get nine eights, call it cheap, a day. Cheap. Yeah, dude, I get one nine eight out of like, like three nine eights out of all the rest of the books I show you, like. Yeah, not yeah, including yeah. the silver at the end. But that's it. Uh, these were cool. Don't find them that often. They'd be great nine eight set. Oh yeah, the different, the different faces. Yeah, on there. that stuff. That army of darkness stuff is. Dude, it is hard to find. There's like these punk rock dudes that all somebody just collects. Clearly, like darker, like horror titles and stuff like this. And so they had that. And so same guy. Like, how are you gonna get a Vampirella Perillo annual for four bucks? Damn. And you know, same cash discount wasn't a big one, but I didn't spend much money there. I think I need to go to like the horror hound and find some of these horror books. Yeah, same as this. These night in these lady death, it's an expensive book, also flawless, man. So yeah. I just saw the back. Somebody of this. will pay for that. I don't even think that was them. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Nope. It's not on the rest, it's on the back of the rest of the books. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I can tell just while like that, but it's okay. Those uh, people love those styles. Lady Death always has their fans, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, same thing. That was from him. Another yeah. dude uh, comes up. I start to dig, and he says, uh, "Just so you know, all I've got is um, all I've got is modern. I don't really have. I don't deal with the older stuff. I've got like modern variants, 2010 and up. That's all these boxes are full of. And I'm all, oh boy, I have found the right place, sir. I will okay. start to dig. I am mildly interested I in those." I, yeah, I like. I realize I know, I not know him, but he has a store in North Hollywood that's been there a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been to his store and we talked. So I'm like, don't you have a you know store around here? So anyway, that guy's really cool. Uh, so I grabbed variants, and then he was also he started talking about the Raiders and realized I had a, a Raiders hat on. It was a red Raiders hat, mm -hmm. so it was not quite, red on red, so it's not quite as obvious. It's, it doesn't look like this. So anyway, so these are uh, I got all these variants from him. Cash price, great, great deals. Never see this Connor. Uh, Avengers Academy. Okay. I don't think it's an expensive book, but again, same thing. I went with, um, I think it's a one in 20 um, on this. So I again went with that. Same thing, these Casadas. You don't find these in bins anymore unless you're with a variant dealer. And these, dude, these are really good, really good prices. Again, oh, more of these. He had a bunch of these. I took the two best ones um, for these Art Adams oh, Justice yeah. Leagues. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going, okay. Um, same more, um, uh, Army of Darkness from the Ashes, the Sidem. Damn, that one's cool, dude. That's cool as shit. Is that a dude. plastic man homage? Um, kind of a little, a little bit. It doesn't throw me off for Sidem, but yeah, that doesn't, I didn't think of that. 
but I mean, I get you could say it, I suppose. That was or a badass cover or punch or something. This thing's sick as hell, dude. He, this is the other one. Like, I honestly, I felt the spine. It felt fine. And like I said, we worked out a cash price at the end. He had it listed at at, te- at ten bucks, and I'm like, that's just going home with me all day. You know what I mean? I'm all, dude. I don't need. You're here in front of me, and I'm here. I don't care if it's seven on eBay. Like we're good, man. I've never seen that one. That's um, badass. I still pick the Avengers Arena number one. Is still a great grab. Scotty's a great grab. You see the sheep, and it's the first uh, Colin Bloodstone. The Avengers Arena series has, I think, has some some decent books in there. He had these as a set. Uh, so uh, number thirty-two set. So we've got was it Tony Daniel and um, oh, yeah. and and AH. Mm-hmm. For cheap, he had them taped. Uh, ta- he had them taped together, and I was like, "I will also take those." More, I love the series, and um, Angel's doing okay. You don't see like I had. You don't. You're not going to see like Angel variants in a bin very often. No. So going with that. And from this guy, this is my favorite book I got. I've never seen it in person. This uh, Ghost Rider is it 77, 22. I don't know why I said 22. Ghost Rider twenty two scrolls. I just think this thing is freaking badass. So this one, this one was priced accordingly, and so I did, I did take this out. Um, so uh, God, I got a deal on it compared to whatever, dude. I don't so, even have any clue what the fuck that is, dude. I don't know. It's just Ghost Rider, and it's badass. It looks cool. <laughs> so there's there's a regular cover that's orange, and the variants. This it's a secret variant. Secret. Yeah, it's, the, variant. it's the it's the scroll variant, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So nine eight's going for like three hundred bucks, like so. If you nine eight that thing. I'm more, yeah, nine eight pays for that whole stack three times over. It's like, a badass. You, cover. you found some cool. That that freaking ash one is badass. I'm gonna look for one, dude. Yeah, that is that fucking skull. I, I said it is. Dude, I don't know if you wrote it down. I can tell you though. Army of Darkness from the Ashes number three. Okay. And I want it. um, then uh, deal on deal cat cash deal on this as well. Is Love this guy. Gonna try to grade it. I don't. I don't know. But I sold my last nine eight. For nine hundred or a thousand, and this was close enough to try to figure it out for eighty bucks. So, well, I mean, his raws are about one hundred and fifty. I don't give a shit. Um, yeah. The guys were really cool. They gave Drew and I a beer. So that post, and That's again, nice. just an- another variant dealer. So uh, again, only grab. You got a beer and variants, man. Yeah. Oh, dude, Drew's like, Drew's like, he's got a stack of dollar, literally a stack of dollar books. How the fuck you get a beer out here? He's old. He's like, I spend money, man. I'm like, dude, I spent eighty dollars. You got like twenty dollar books, dude. The guys that go on a beer too. I'm all, yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> Lucky fucking AI, I do. It was on my story. I should make it a post. Uh, again, all but two of these. So same thing. You had me a beer. Yeah, full and these. All these are half off. Then cash. It's more. But yeah. again, these are these are going these are going to the the grading pile. Make more money. All the spawns I send them. This this cover is always gonna sell, mm-hmm. and this 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 thing's flawless. Um, same as this, uh, pretty rare spawn variant. This is two ninety three. Uh, one of the later ones again ninety eight. Um, this one, I don't know if it's nine eight, but I'm not leaving these oh. for four bucks, yeah. and I'm giving it to the guy that's making a comic wall. Also, that's a great. But if part. it is nine eight, I'll probably I probably will grade it. I'll still give it to him. Um, again, just any of these Deadpools people, they're like people are starting to find ones from these series. I only take the high grade ones. Um, same with this, just love the Death Dealer for Zeta. Yeah, so th- this is one that, uh, I don't know, I think four bucks. I don't, it looks nice enough, but that one I didn't care about. The I grade. mean, let's be honest, between you know, modern books like nine four to nine eight, four bucks, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I don't care. That, yeah. And that, well, that last that one might not be, but almost all these are. I just like that cover, and it, I like ones that are also like I like to give p- people art of artists they like in comic form, or shows that they like in comic form because it's like it's what I do. So it's like it feels like a more personal gift. I don't know. They all the every all the shit I pick out for people ends up displayed somewhere at their house. Then you're doing all right. So that's good enough. And that's this fun. one though, this thing is fucked up. And I, it wasn't even bagged and boarded, but it was a dollar. And so it's filthy. So it's the real art, not for retail. And you cannot hurt this thing, by the way. Um, the not for resale um, thing. So it's the first thing I found in a dollar being beat up like this. It's way dirtier than it looks on the screen, by the way. Way dirtier. But at the same time, all I did was dig in there. I was digging through the dollar books. I didn't even want them all. But I know the kind of stuff Drew, I'm standing there with Drew, stuff that he sells on his show. 
and he um um boobs and some <laughs> variants so like i'm like i make up step he's all he's all, oh is there, is there good stuff in there and i was like honestly most of these i pulled out are for you yeah. and he's like okay and they're a dollar he's gonna make more than a dollar like yeah. it's not he just sells they're gonna sell for eight dollars a piece or whatever uh i think that's it i didn't buy any slabs i, I got i got not, not i got i think this is it so this was from the same the same guy chris did um and i got so i got good deals i feel like chris got better deals but that's yeah. fine. so this is the um so I this is mine. the yeah. first new costume yep. okay he have multiples of all these just in a bin to dig out Jesus. okay no without they didn't have prices on them <laughs> some of them did some of them didn't and then some had grades some didn't have prices and i just and if he had multiple i would just i was in the mood you know it was my last stop on sunday mm -hmm. so i'm only spending x amount i'm not trying to you know spend another grand or something and so or i would have probably whatever so i just picked my favorite like the very cleanest stuff that he had mm -hmm. with like the characters i'm a cyclops fan i think most people are but yeah. like so something clean with the characters i really like a book i don't have I'm so excited with 97 how to treat the Cyclops like a badass like you should have been. Yeah, dude, I got to I have to catch up on the last one. So these so this stuff, I just love the pre-reprint X-Men's uh and FF uh 50, uh 58 any just Doom. Yeah, Dooms. I just with these I just go with the recognizable characters and covers. Yeah, you Doom, know? Doom cells. This this cube cover has always been I haven't had a copy lately. Um this has always been my my favorite cube. A cosmic cube i just can't tell like i got a copy of this a long time ago for cheap in a store so this is um this is a nicer copy than uh the other ones that i've had i don't think i have any left so yeah i just want to keep this put on my light maybe put it on the shelf back there or something like that i just for whatever reason and it, you know the cosmic cube being such a part of the marvel you know, yeah. cinematic deal just and uh, red skull kind of kicking it off as you know cap being one of the first movies is great and then i didn't realize this is not big key but this book has gone up significantly oh yeah that's oh yeah it's huge man yeah. so this is yeah this is two something raw mm -hmm. and like that so i got i got all those i got all the silver for probably a tiny bit more than what this would have cost so very nice good enough good enough he was he said first he was like can we do this easy way or the hard way i said tell me the easy way <laughs> we, he's all we go 50 bucks a book or i start marking everything up and I had like six, and I think we ended at like two two fifty. And I'm done. Like, I'm good. I'm good. good to go, man. I was Easy hoping way, it too. Day. Well, fucking Chris getting Spider Man Annual One for seventy five. The fuck was I gonna think, dude? Yeah. <laughs> ASM three hundred newsstand for under two. I don't care what grade. Exactly. No, yeah, and it's it's a six five or seven is what he he told me, and I looked at it, and the front was clean. Yeah, go. Who cares? Yeah. God damn. What do you got, John? All right, so these are. Two weird things. Well, one we talked about on a uh, Mark Report. I finally got the uh, the One Piece first print manga. Let's manga go. Version. Uh, Dino had sent me this link right after that show where we had seen a six hundred dollar one. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in the UK without UK without US shipping. I messaged. The, I was going to get a guy to buy it for me and ship it. And I I shot the guy a message and said, "Hey, would you ship to the US?" He goes, "I'll turn on global shipping." I'm like, "All right," and it was just under 200 dollars all in so put go. this away gonna give it to the kid at some point the other thing was a personal curiosity i actually misbought it because uh this caliber rounds is the caliber comics uh promotional newsletter and they had labeled it caliber presents one and the crow and i just hit buy quickly because i've only seen two and this would have been the third, but when I got it, I realized, wait, this isn't what I had. Um, this is mentioning that they're reprinting, or no, that they are, Caliber Presents 1 is still available, and they're letting it be reordered, and they're actually an ad for Caliber Presents 11 in here. So they're, they're still a year into the production of this book, and they're still, people are still ordering it. So that's wild to me that, you know, what we consider a classic was sitting around and being able to order for an entire year. So I will add it to the crow collection of curiosities. Interesting. So yeah, pretty cool for like 30 bucks. I'm like, all right, I'll put it in the weirdness. You have to. Yeah. You have to. That's it. So 
Dino, you Dino, got you anything? Buying you shit report? or what? No, oh, I got. I, yes, I had my. Tur- I showed you my turtle shoes. Did I show? Did I show you my turtle shoes? And oh, the- you got the shoes. Yeah, yeah I got the shoes. Uh, they're over there. Um, nice. I showed the coupon show. last time, right? The coupon, the Doom coupon. Uh, yeah, I'm apparently driving my child to uh, Louisville for a sneaker con this weekend. Nice. Look at you. Yeah. Don't fly yeah. him to Medellin. He'll get stuck. Yeah. yeah. He's he's <laughs> trying to trade some Yeezys because he. Hit on a lot of Yeezys, and then Yeezy went and dissed yeah. Um, yeah. Adidas. So that's a shit show. So that's the problem with the the, the shell toes right now for TNT. They only work like one eighty right now, and I'm like, I might as well just keep them. For I think that's one of those things you sit on and maybe it's, or see if the yeah, comic age as well. It's break wait. even. It, that's and one on eBay. That's almost break even. Oh no, yes. you know what? Shoes are only six percent, and they charge shipping. So other, so actually, you just get a little better deal on the sneakers if you wanted to make like thirty bucks. I think that's one you just sit on a minute and just see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 dude, they're made to hang on the wall. Yeah, and you don't you don't have that much in it. What if you find out you know the comic nine eight starts selling because people just want one? Just just sit on it, yeah. see what happens. Oh uh, yeah, I wish you could sell the grade of the comic. Yeah, because then you could just sell somebody your shoes yeah. and then get a nine eight and make. And then you're good. Yeah. That is the negative, though, that they're in a clamshell, though. Well, you could no, you could take the the paper out. Oh, so you, you can take the comic out and the slide it slides out, and oh, okay. then the clamshell has the shoes in it. But you have to rip the the comic. You know, it has like one of those pull tabs, yeah. and that's what a comic's inside of that. Okay. So if they wanted the shoes, I could definitely just give them the shoes, no big deal. Okay. And then keep the backing board. I guess you would call it. All right, I'm gonna run through this market report because we're in pretty deep yeah. right now right. Yeah, yeah. you have to go but thank you guys all right man appreciate, it. appreciate the love good luck yeah. uh, hey, let me do this for you too all right we're gonna uh, do a quick one for for yeah. the fans who've stuck it out yeah, yeah yeah 63 people man let's go all right haven't seen this one in ages and i just saw one sell for 406 pretty nice looks like a decent grade this is the alter ego 7 the uh pseudo second appearance of black adam because it was pre shazam 28 so kind of cool book um i'm jumping around real quick because i also saw this book different seller i think um marvel family one 5.0 went for only 7500 um at one point i sold the 5.0 after the movie tanked and i auctioned it at mcs and i, I think i ended up right around 11 or 12 grand and somebody had sold right before and ended up in the 20s. So I thought I got killed. At least I didn't hold on longer. Um, I will probably keep monitoring and potentially buy back in at some point. But I'm not sure what grade do I want to look at. So, yeah, still in free fall. Because The Rock, the one time he fucks shit up. Um ASM one German edition. I don't particularly love this one. The cover is just too much going on for me. Too many colors, and it's definitely a more modern reprint in seventy four. Uh, but seven five sold for five hundred bucks. Nice book. I, the Germans to me are. I think they're highly printed and a little later than I like. So what we got here. I just like this because it was uh, some um, church. Edgar Church Mile High comics, highest graded. If you kind of wanted to get a cheap one, um, real high grade. Uh, and he appears to be doing the uh, biathlon, the Blue Beetle on the biathlon, maybe. Yes. Uh, there's another church in here somewhere. Um, Black Lightning 198. Uh, I think all heat is dead on this book, but still sold 650. So it's not bad. Piece of art that I thought was interesting. Um, Blackest Night, I'm sorry, Brightest Day, number nine, page five. Um, first Jackson Hyde in a very interesting shot with the water and everything. Um, I don't know if I would have bought it, but I think it's a pretty cool piece if you uh like that character from Young Justice and see if it continues to go on. So, definitely a cool piece. Darth Vader, fourth print. Still selling very well. The purple cover is kind of eye-catching, I think. Um, 
I have no idea what's going on here. This one sold twice in the same day today, earlier today. I don't know if it sold the third time since I sent him to Dino. This is some guy that potentially picked it up at a estate auction from the guy that... I forgot the guy's name now. Um, he published one of the... Um, is it Comic Illustrated? Uh, one of the comic fanzines and had a nice collection of things. This was sent to him directly. So the earlier sale was 14K. The later sale was 10K. Either way, you know, the gobbledygook is ungodly tough to find. So I don't know if either of them stuck, but interesting either way. And if somebody got it, they're going to be pretty happy, I think. He sold, he sold another one. He sold two more. Of the same thing? I don't think he has multiple copies, though. I'm going to put that down for a second. So, I can see. so it keeps going? 13,000? 18,2? When was that? Today. Dude, I don't know what's going on here. This is a... Uh... Who was who the seller? Yeah, Ashland, Oregon Auctions. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one. So I don't know if people keep canceling or... He thinks he can get more money? I don't know. Like, he appears to be a legit seller based on his sold items. And he had a lot of obscure, like, um, other stuff that was obscure, uh, independent books. He doesn't have many more comics up, but the sold stuff, if you look at it, was all these kind of vintage uh, um, comic lots. So, I... I don't know what to think about this gobbledy gook thing. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. So I, I, when it sells five times in a day, maybe he keeps getting offers. Maybe. Somebody canceled, then somebody bought it, and then somebody's like... Or somebody's like, I'll pay you more. Just I'll pay you that. five more. Or, I, I don't know. Okay. So some, something funny is going on, but I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. Um... Air Pirates, the uh, the Mickey Mouse Disney lawsuit book. Uh, cool one. I know a lot of people collect this one just because it's I mean, for curiosity. Value. That's not a bad deal for a 9.6. I mean. That's kind of what I thought. Out of Canada, so he probably got a little bit of a steal. Yep. Um, Miles, the uh, oh, Staples variant continues to kill Raw. Graded all the above. This was a book I have no idea what the fuck it is. Mr. T, man. Mr. T. Steranko, dude. 2006 variant by Steranko. I I would have done more research, but I just got sidetracked. But uh, I actually want the I want to go see Steranko and have him sign this. Oh wow! Holy smokes! What do you got? If you put this one down. Oh wow. So those are listed? Yeah. Huh. Weird. 800 bucks, man. Well, so, wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know this book existed. Let's go with that. It's 20, 2006 Comic Con edition. I wonder how many really sold. Oh, look at that. Jim's Crider coming through. Only a few in the wild, huh? Well, they're all on eBay. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, a little comic knowledge. Stranko backs movie. down from uh, Mr. T. I think Stranko might take him. Old man is tough as fucking anything. Um, let's see, a couple more. Oh, people are hitting me up on your one piece, man. Uh, Red Hood, Lost Days, of course. Another one we saw one fairly cheap. This six fifty seems to be kind of the current price point. I love that book. I just wouldn't. Let it. I, I know it's going to go down farther, I think. I, man, I don't know if it is or isn't. It seems to hit its point, man. Uh, Ozzy got one cheaper. I can't remember exactly. I think he was closer to five. Yeah. But I don't think it's going anymore. Um, wow. 75, 98. I mean, this used to be higher, but it's holding well for as many as we've seen come out. Yeah, I mean, remember it was like two grand back in the day because nobody knew about it. And then all of a sudden it was like everyone and their mother had one finally. 
I sold the raw for almost five. Yeah. And that was a friend price in the group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's this one? Oh, this was just another mile high. Kind of, yep. again, there were a group of two of them. I thought they were neat. Thrawn continues to befuddle me on how much people like this book, but again, Matina, pretty high character. Uh, This is the ugliest copy of this book I've seen in a while. Um, I, it is not a nine. It is not an eight. I'm not sure it's a six or a seven. There is a crease on the corner. That's got to be a half inch. There are spine ticks up the wazoo. There is some, color rub in a couple places this uh, is like 2010 price or 2012 pricing <laughs> no but it is beat so like this I is know. one of those things where sean's talking about the guy with you know 20 copies of the book and buy one and he'd take the nicest this is the one at the back that nobody took yeah so uh <laughs> wow um let's see speaking of rare this is the Wolvie nabisco variant for I 600 bucks does it look beat uh, it's yeah. not great. I didn't get. I wanted one of these on. forever too, and I just don't want to spend the big money for it. No, no, but it's uh, it still sells well because nobody can find the damn thing. Um, and then this was just a cool cover. This is a barber slash uh, skull cover. So you know, I didn't put up your uh, three killers book. Oh. Me and me, we talked about it last week when I did a market report when you were okay. here. And then it's an LB Cole cover. That's why it was so expensive. Well, I thought you'd like it too. I oh, it was dope. It. I, me and Carter were talking about it. And, um, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, me and Carter talked about it. And I was like, why is this? And it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a LB Cole cover. And I was like, yeah. Jesus. Well, I like, I like this one because, you know, there's, there's the famous dentist covers. This is the famous barber cover for you. Correct. If you're a barber, this is the book. This is the one you need. Yes. So, uh, so <laughs> what Mr. I got. Mr. T's books is coming out of Warrior Saints at Long Short. Yep. Long Short, oh, Brian. Nice. Ben, yeah. Mentioned his book last week, and now I'll come to eBay out with him. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I'm like, I'd never heard of it. So, it hey, somebody, come, you know, it's, it, we, we, you know, and me, I hate to say, it, I don't say we're the most powerful people on the planet, but we, we talk about books, and all of a sudden they just like, when I talked about that stupid WCW, uh, NWO tape, and all of a sudden they're, you know, sealed yeah. tapes for 400 bucks. It's just like, well, somebody brings it to people's minds, and they're all like, I got that, or I want that, and then, then it's over. So, I'm not, I don't care to hype it because most of these things I don't have, I just I find them interesting when I see them. Yeah, same with me now. That's all I do. I got to go to a show eventually. I got to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I, I still am, I am very limited on what I'm buying. I, I've looked at a few pieces of art, and I've looked at a few things here and there, but I'm I'm being very selective. I almost bought a 300 a couple of days ago for um, ASM 300 for like 300 bucks. Uh, I just don't know where the market on that guy's going. He's yeah, I, just, I was like, do I just keep? I mean, I, I asked him. For it is very people. unpredictable on yeah. books, man. That it was that one. I don't want to gamble. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest looking cover either. And like for 250, I'm like, I want a 250 for, and he's like, oh, it's sold. Sorry, I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah. f that. All right, man. That's all I got. Cool. That's all we got. Um, not Mark. I wasted with Mark Jewelers. Um, let's see. Uh, tomorrow, Mr. Uh, Carter, uh, me and me and Merson on, on Tuesdays. Um, I'm doing Sunday shows with Carter now on his channel, so it's always a blessing. Nice. For me. Double duty. Yep. 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 Oh, it's triple duty now. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So yeah. It's good times. It's like COVID hours. I know, right? Look at that. The color version of Mr. T book has a print run of 15 copies. Oh, wow. Look Jesus. Look all these I, who knows so much about Mr. T books in this fucking group? Right? No, there's there's Stranko fans. Yeah. I, I got a Stranko up there. I'm, I'm all about it, dude. Dude, that guy's badass. I love him. He is. He is. Um, uh, nothing much. Uh, I'm doing Twitch streams. Uh, I bought Helldivers, so everybody <laughs> can see me play Helldivers. I still play Fortnite with the nieces, so... Well, if you would have if you've been watching, uh, I'm not on Twitch, but my 12 year old just beat my ass in FIFA 24 oh, boy. Uh, and decided to pull his goalie to score a goal on me. So that's how it was going. Wow. I, uh, I, I can hit his I, goalie, not pull the goalie, score yeah. with the goalie. I played, uh, I played the last time I played FIFA was 20. Um, I don't know if I'm going to play it. The, the Marvel shooting game is coming out. Um, 
I, you know, I don't have that much time to play. I play like a couple hours, you know, a week kind of yeah. thing uh, with everything I got going on. So, yeah, we'll see. But I try to, um, I just try to play more and more. So, hopefully, can, hopefully Wait, you're just play. waiting for your kid to be able to play. Yeah. So we, we, he, he played Hell Divers with me and he like <laughs> just, so he just moves the mouse around. He goes, oh, wow. And we play racing on Fortnite. We play Lego Fortnite. Yeah. But he just loves it. He's like, oh, wow. And he thinks it's hilarious. So. Get yourself some Minecraft and you're done. Oh, he's all about me. So he does, he's never played Minecraft, but he watches the videos now. He's like, dad, Minecraft. He doesn't, he doesn't know. Dude, my kids, they, they keep drifting back to it every once in a while, too. Even like at 16, they'll you'll catch them. You're like, what are you doing? Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. We're going to head out. And then I, you know, we all get to work and do big boy stuff. Shit in the morning, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, guys, we'll talk to everybody later. Um, you know, like you said, just support the channel, hang out, do some things. It's all cool. So, all right, guys, we'll talk to everybody later.